next season or you know maybe something will ter- take a turn in the next few days and maybe by next week he'll be able to get out there but it has been one of the very big disappointments in a season full of them for the Wolves. Let's you and I do a little self-scouting here. I've seen some criticisms of the way that Tibbs and Saunders are portrayed, the way my paper covers the Timberwolves. Let's see if we can kind of give an honest assessment of how we've gone about things here. Do want to thank SodaStick.com. Use the promo code YouBetcha to get free shipping on any size order. We've told you about all their uh, all their shirts, all their paraphernalia, all their apparel, all their their doohickeys, including a hockey stick plunger, which I don't know how you live without. Uh, but one of the newest things they have to offer at SodaStick.com is blade shades. Uh, they are they are hockey stick related accessories. Uh, they look cool. Uh, they are made from polycarbon frame with metal metal hinges and anti distortion and UV protection. So they are gimmicks. They're actually really nice sunglasses that work really well. That have all the modern accoutrements you would want. Uh, but they're cool, you know, and then they, again, they're hockey themed. Uh, as we've always told you, they also have all kinds of basketball themed apparel, uh, whether, you know, it's Timberwolves ish stuff, you know, but it also might refer more to Prince or more to the Minnesota basketball culture as a whole rather than just being team branded stuff. So check out sodastick.com, promo code you betcha for free shipping on anything. So I, I have a friend who's, I don't know if I'm calling for it, I have an acquaintance who's friends with Tibbs. And of course, like you, uh, I see stuff on social media. If you're on social media, you're going to see stuff, uh, whether you like it or not. And one theme that is out there is Star Tribune is going to take it easy on Glenn Taylor because he owns the, tim- the newspaper as well as the Timberwolves. Another theme from people, the people I know who do like Tibbs, and yes, there are those people out there, is that we're too hard on Tibbs, we're too nice to Ryan. And we're not hard enough on all the other problems that Tibbs had to confront in working in this organization. Uh, I'll, just, I'll give it, give you the floor. Where do you, th- how do you think, you know, mainstream local media have covered Tibbs, Saunders, and Taylor? And are we being too soft on certain people and not 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 soft enough on other people? Well, uh, I had uh, from a personal standpoint, I had zero issues with Tibbs and. Um, I thought we got along fine. It was a professional relationship. And so you, I think that there there is a perception out there among the Tibbs backers that because he wasn't soft and fuzzy and because he wasn't in- incredibly accessible, that he is graded on a tougher curve than others who are accessible. And I don't, I mean, I don't know that that's fair, to be honest. I mean, sure, there is part of it where if if a person in a position of power engages with either media or fans or his or her own employees and kind of presents their vision in an open and transparent way, I think it's easier to connect with that. It's easier to understand that side of the equation. And so you do give probably other people benefits of the doubt a little bit more who are willing to at least let you peek behind the curtain a little bit. Um, Tibbs' approach was isolationism, was I don't, I'm not going to explain myself to you. I know what works. I know what goes into winning, as he would always say. And you just need to sit back and let me do my thing. And that can work if you are successful. But he, the very bottom line in all of this was Tibbs is not successful. So Tibbs pushed all of his chips into the middle of the table in the heart of the Golden State Warriors run and said, we're going to go for it. And it failed spectacularly. Um, the Jimmy Butler thing was an abject disaster. And I know they made the playoffs one year. That's great. That part of it, it the, this organization does owe a debt of gratitude to Tibbs because now the the, um, the, curse, the curse, the drought is over. And so that doesn't have to be the goal anymore. Just get into the playoffs and snap the stinking drought. Now they can make whatever plans they are going forward knowing we have that monkey off our back. Let's just configure to have what we think is going to be the most sustainable thing for the long-term success of this franchise. And that is a valuable thing. But you look at his body of work over those three years, those two and a half years that he was here, he didn't win enough. The moves that he made 
were not good enough and either blew up spectacularly or were underwhelming. I mean, Derrick Rose was a good move. Taj Gibson was a good move. Jimmy Butler, terrible move. Jeff Teague, not a good move. Um, and Chris Dunn. Chris Dunn. Justin meh, Patton. Meh. You uh, know. Okogie's a nice pick. Okogie's a nice pick. Kata Bates Jeff seems like a nice pick. But there, there, there were enough things that were happening that did not bring the success that he anticipated it would, number one. Number two, it is beyond dispute that the vast majority of people inside the organization, in that locker room, in the front office, in the business side, in the ownership group, were abjectly miserable during this whole time. And that is taking cues from your leader. And so when you take on the title of president, it is a political appointment. It is you have to engage the public. You have to do a lot of the stuff that you probably have to hold your nose with, that you roll your eyes at when you just want to coach basketball and win games. But when you are shepherding an organization that hasn't won and when you're not having immediately huge success in doing it, you have to do all of the little things, all of the marketing things, some media stuff, just to kind of grease the wheels for yourself and take some of the pressure off of the whole situation. And instead, he did none of that and had, I don't know, 75% of the people in that building just grumbling all the time. And the people who talk to the media in those in, in situations almost always are unhappy people. And if you don't feel a part of something, if you feel disconnected, if it feels like you're out kind of in this wilderness and the big guy is on his throne and not letting anybody be a part of it, it is going to contribute to an atmosphere of negativity that only really, really high level winning can overcome. And so that's the bar that you set for yourself that way. I would think that, yes, I mean, I think Ryan is getting a little bit more of a benefit out, number one, because he's 32 years old and has been thrust into a, a terrible situation. Number two, he's had a ton of injuries that he's had to deal with. And number three, he has been more engaging, and he has been willing to kind of connect with not just media, but people in the organization and have a relationship with it. Relationships are important, and it may sound new agey, and it may sound cuddly and all that stuff, but that's an important part of being a leader of an organization is developing and fostering the important relationships that you need. And so that's, you know, that's the whole thing. And the other part of it is, yes, you can grumble about Glenn Taylor and maybe what he wants out of a coach or out of a person, but when you decide to sign up and work for that guy and take his checks you got to understand, he wants that. He wants that engagement. He wants that personal relationship. I was talking to another agent of coaches today, and one of his guys is in another situation that's not going well, and um, the coach is bickering about the owner wanting to be more involved and being too heavy-handed, and the agent is, was playing. Look, you knew what you were getting into, and you knew that this was part of the business in today's day and age. And so... You know, Tibbs is not solely to blame for everything that went wrong here, but I do think that his backers sort of look down their noses at people who who kind of said, looked around and said, man, everybody hates working here. You know, you, you, this isn't going to work. And they, they look down their noses at that, and they f- refuse to accept any accountability into the whole thing. Like, Every time Tibbs would get up and, and something wasn't working, you ask yourself two questions. Are they doing it hard enough and are they executing properly? And the implication was always was, not my fault, it's these guys. You know, you knew what Carl Anthony Towns was when you were coming in. You knew what Andrew Wiggins was. And that's why he took the job. That's why I mean, he took the job. He took the job because of young, underdeveloped talent and a lot of money. Yes. And, and, and so if... If any of this, just like the Wolves need to be 
um, reprimanded because most of what happened with Tibbs should not have been a surprise at all. All you had to do was make two phone calls to Chicago and you would understand this is the guy that you're getting for better or worse. Um, and, and that's exactly what they got. So shame on them for being surprised that Tibbs wasn't this, you know, um, super connected, uh, baby kisser and, 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 and hand squeezer. Like, so there's that, but also shame on Tibbs and his guys for not saying, for, for being surprised that, oh my gosh, you know, Andrew Wiggins and Carl Anthony Towns are kind of different. I can't just yell and scream at them and get it like Jimmy Butler and Taj Gibson would. Um, oh my gosh, Glenn Taylor doesn't like that I curse a blue streak up and down the sideline. In front of his kids. Yeah. I mean, his nephews you or know, grandchildren or whatever. He's got to do his own homework as well. And I just think that, you know, the the sort of total dismissal of the Timberwolves as this franchise that's always failed and so it wasn't Tibbs's fault at all it was all on the these guys who are having unnecessary expectations I know there was not unnecessary expectations or um, unreasonable expectations of Tibbs they just wanted some interaction some help some um, conversation and that was goes for in the locker room too I mean after every game with Tibbs there were four or five players coming up to me and pissing and moaning about the situation, about the lack of communication, about all that stuff. And it's not all just the high maintenance guys. It's it was you know strong, sturdy guys who have been in that locker room for a while. And so when you have all of that permeating, I just I, I can't feel sorry for the way that it went down. I mean, I, I'm not going to do that and. You know, at the end of the day, number one, he 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 presided over an atmosphere of complete misery. Number two, um, he didn't win enough. Like he didn't win. If they were the third seed in the in the West on January sixth, after they beat the Lakers, he would still be here. But he didn't. They were terrible, four and nine, and they were not playing well. And then he let the Jimmy Butler thing happen. He dug his own grave, unfortunately. Like that's just the that that's the facts of the case. And again, I have I harbor no ill will toward him. He was he always nice. Um, he was always cordial. My kids met him. He you know, they they all they liked him. Like all of that stuff. I have zero animosity at all for him. But the the facts of the case were this is what happened during his reign. And that's why he's not here anymore. Yeah, and you know, from my perspective, I uh, I talked to him a lot in Brazil. Uh, I talked to him. I had a few personal conversations his first summer here. Last summer, when they were doing kind of the goodwill tour, I spent some time with him. Did a podcast with him. Had some long conversations with him. And what I found fascinating about that is, and so I I liked him in those settings. I didn't necessarily dislike him in other settings. I just found him very dis- aloof. Yeah. But what I found amazing was even when they wanted to do the goodwill tour and they wanted to kind of show his personal side and, and maybe earn some goodwill, as soon as the – even then, if the subject turned to Timberwolves basketball, it, the, the switch went on and it became robot time. Mm-hmm. And we saw the same guy we saw at every post-game press conference where they, he cut off the question to offer the boilerplate answer. It just – he – I, I think there's a really good coach in there, a knowledgeable coach, but he can't do the other stuff. He just can't do it. Right. And and look, like everyone knows, like I had a really good relationship with Flip. He would call me at midnight and talk about things, and that was that's the that's out the of section. the norm. Yes. I am not even like my assessment of whether the Tibbs regime worked or not has absolutely nothing to do with the media side of it even. Because, like, one thing that I absolutely admire about both Tom Thibodeau and Scott Layden is they didn't engage me or anyone else. But they didn't play the favorites. Media, but they didn't play favorites. Yep. And that was their, that's their position the whole way. We do not want to be this, we want to be the Patriots of, of the NBA. And fine. Like, I, I, I don't expect or demand to have any sort of like behind the scenes looks like that. If that's how you want to play it, that's okay. 
But if you do it that way, 